Hello and welcome to the very first show that I've got now. Um, I just want to introduce myself if you don't know who I am. My name is Christian Woodford. I'm the Director of Athlete Performance here at Woodford Sports Science Consulting. Um, we're very, uh, very lucky to have three centres, two that are standalone and then two at the moment that are kind of we're renting out. Um, one in Moorabbin, one in Dandong, one in the West and one in Ballarat currently. So I'm very lucky to do what I do. Um, I spread as much information on applied sports science, athletic development in Australia, and I really want to be a driver and develop um, applied sports science in Australia so it reaches more athletes, not just at the pro level, but at the sub-elite level, the amateur, the weekend warrior level. Now, before I start, this will be released on our very own YouTube channel named, as you can see up here, YouTube Christian Woodford. So if you want to go check that out, um, as I said, this will be called... What are we calling it, Alex? Ask Woodford. Ask Woodford. We're calling this Ask Woodford, this show. This is a show where um, I want to thank Alex Sen Sendalis. Yep. Um, I got it right. Alex Sendalis. So uh, the guy behind the camera who will be talking is Alex. Alex, you want to say hello to everyone? What up, what up? So um, Alex has had this idea to really develop. Um, he's intern at Woodford. I coach him. The guy behind the camera, um, Alex, he'll be helping us out. Um, we're going to kind of keep this um, very raw and open. I'm going to be very honest. Um, we really want to, I really want to push. I get so many questions, I can't answer them all. So we're going to pick the best three questions every week. Um, and then I'm going to answer them the best of my ability. There's going to be some things I don't know. Sometimes we might even bring on some guests. I don't know. Let's just talk shop. Let's chew the fat. Let's see what we can get out of this. This show won't go for longer than I'm trying not to ramp it. You know me. It could go on for about four and a half hours. I'll try and keep it as short as possible. And we'll see where we go with it. So um, what was the name of the show again? I've forgotten already. What was the name of the show? Ask Woodford. Ask Woodford. Ask Woodford. So, where can they, uh, where can they, if they want to ask me a question for next week's show, episode yeah. two, where can they go, Alex? Just hashtag Ask Woodford. Put it in the comment section of the Facebook yep. or Instagram. Just make sure you hashtag Ask Woodford so we can find your questions on strength and conditioning. So, there we go. Ask Woodford. And this could be any question pertaining to athletic development, yep. rehab, Anything. business, yep. life, relationships. I'm probably not the best one to give relationship advice, but hey, this is what the show's for. Ask away any question. Alex, throw me the first one. All right, Bill from Western Australia. So Bill, hello Bill from Western Australia. <laughs> Christian, why do you talk about the glutes so much? Are they really that important for athlete development? Okay, Bill from Western Australia. Um, I can't get this question a lot. I think they, uh, it's really important to understand the function of the glutes and um, understand why I believe, personally, a lot of people give me shit about it. Am I allowed to swear on this? It's your show, man. You do whatever Sorry, you want. Yeah, fine. Sorry, Mum. But I think that a lot of people neglect the posterior chain. A lot of people are very anterior chain dominant. So when I say anterior chain, they go in the gym and they focus on squats, they focus on leg press, they focus on leg extension lunge. These are all quad dominant movements. I talk about the posterior chain a lot being the power. So this is the glutes being the powerhouse. Now, I want you to think the glutes being the first hip extensor of the body. When I say a hip extensor, I want you to think sprinting, jumping, change direction, that's a hip extensor movement. Now, if we look at the glutes as a whole, we have three glutes. Glute maximus, which is the big one. And I, I hope, Alex, you've got subtitles come along, yeah? Is that gonna happen? Yeah, good, I hope so. So yeah, if you, you look down there. Graphics and everything. Graphics, heck what is this? Graphics and everything. So if you look at the first one, glute max, that's the big one, okay? That's needed for hip extension. Then you've got two smaller ones, glute min and med. They're smaller stabilizer ones. And they're critical for stabilization. Now the glutes have five roles. To abduct the hip, to extend the hip, to extend and rotate the hip, to posteriorly tilt the pelvis back to neutral or backwards. Okay, and also the fifth one, which is the most important in my opinion, is to stabilize the hip. Now, what I've seen, and this is just anecdotally and through my results, and I'm really big on having skin in the game and coaching, and uh, one thing I talk about with my staff a lot is what's theoretical is always practical. That's what we learn and the, what I taught you guys. Well, I didn't really teach it. Alex was a West intern, so big shout out to Maddie and uh, Dylan, done a really good job. But one thing that we taught was you can have all the theory in the world, but if you don't apply, it's kind of useless, yeah? So I think there's a real big gap at the moment in the market, the private sector in Australia. Well, hopefully I've kind of filled the void a little bit, but I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Stubbsy, am I doing a good job? You did a great job, mate. Okay, Stubbsy. Um, and I feel that there's, there was a big gap before I started Woodford between the theory and the application. So I used to say, what's theoretical is always practical, what's done in the lab is always transferable to the athletic environment. So I kind of felt that 
a lot of individuals weren't really talking about in a scientific way the importance of the posterior chain, the importance of the glutes for athletic development injury reduction. Another important factor of the glutes is it protects four main key areas, the lower back, the hips, the hamstring, and the knee. So it really, really takes the load off those four main areas, which a lot of athletes get injured through the lower body. So kind of what I found was through my own coaching was the more times I coached, and I call it coaching reps, and the more good quality reps I got, the better I got at coaching, the more I started to see a pattern of athletic development. And the pattern kept showing up to me through coaching reps, coaching reps, coaching athletes, different type of athletes was one that most athletes move like shit. But the second thing was most are really anterior chain dominant, core dominant and lack that glute activation. And I saw a correlation with not only athletes that came for me for performance, but rehab athletes with ACL injuries, back issues, knee issues, a jumper's knee, ACLs, medials, um, hip issues. Um, I, I kept hamstring strains. I kept seeing the same pattern. And the same pattern kept showing up was lack of glute activation. I'm not saying that I activate the glutes all the because regardless, you walk, you, you get hip extension, you're going to get some sort of glute activation. I understand that. For the idiots out there who call me out and say, oh, are you saying you don't use your glutes? No, dickhead, I'm not saying that. I'm saying a large percentage of emotion units in your glutes aren't activated because you haven't stimulated them to a high level. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you don't use your glutes. Of course, you fucking use your glutes. But what I'm saying is you don't use them at a high level. So I kept finding that when I was coaching, not just in the research, in terms of if you want to look at research with a Brett Contreras, but I was con, Contreras, Stubbsy, Contre, Contreras, 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 Contreras. But what I was finding was the more time I looked at hinging, RDL, and deadlifting, double leg hip thrust, training bent leg and straight leg hip extension, and what what I mean by bent leg and straight leg hip extension, depending on the link tension relation, will dictate which is the prime mover and which is the synergist between the glute and the hamstring. Example: if the hamstring's short and the legs bent, the prime mover and extension becomes the glutes. If the knee straightened. Um, straight leg hip extension, the prime move pretty much becomes a hamstring. So an RDL is a hamstring dominant movement, uses the glute still during extension. Um, a hip thrust is like um, a glute dominant movement because the hamstring is shortened. It can't, the hamstrings can't contribute to hip extension much because they're shortened, they're contracted, the glute becomes the prime mover. Or you can become integrative like a stability ball leg curl where you get straight leg and bent leg hip extension. I don't know where I was, but I'm going to keep going with where I am. And then what I kept seeing was the more times I stimulated the glutes, athletes kept coming to me saying, Woody, I'm jumping, I'm running quicker, I'm changing direction more effectively. Woody, I'm coming back from this hamstring injury. Woody, I feel better with my knee, I feel more stable. I just kept seeing it and that's why Bill from West Australia, I found that developing the glutes, developing the posterior chain, developing the posterior chain as one unit, I realized it through my own coaching, through my results I got with my athletes, that the, the, part, the glutes are critical for athletic performance, injury reduction, and general health and well-being. So, Bill, hopefully that answers your question. Alex, I've just done one question, I'm stuffed. Give me the second one. Sarah from Queensland. Hi, Sarah. I'm, a, I'm an aspiring performance coach and want to... Is an aspiring performance coach, I want to do what, what, what you what do. What, advi what, what, I want advice. You do with, what advice can you give to me? I want to do what you do. Sarah, I have the perfect man to answer the question and he's standing right over there. So if he wants to come in here, maybe sit next to me, we can talk about this. Well, he can, but I'll, I'll talk about it first. Sarah, very good question. Number one, I would suggest getting an undergrad degree. I believe that, um, and I have from the day I started this till the day I die, I believe that um, knowledge is power. I believe you should have a strong theoretical grounding because that will lay the foundation for your performance coaching career, developing athletes, um, developing the general population, understanding the science behind your programs. Um, it's very important to understand that. So um, I think an exercise science degree or a degree in our, um, any science, health science, whatever it is, biology, who gives a shit, get it. Also another thing about that is it shows your employer that you really want a fucking career in these three years. Uh, I know people will, uh, will disagree with me. I don't give a shit if you do. This is what I believe in. I only hire um, coaches with an undergrad degree. If you want to be serious, get a degree. My opinion with that. Um, that will lay the foundation for your coaching career. That's the first thing. That, you, that That's the first thing to really give you a good theoretical on uh, grading. You don't need an honours. You don't need a master's. You don't need a PhD unless you're working um, in uh, academia. I don't believe you need a master's degree. I don't, and I need an honours. You don't need an honours. Um, just get an undergrad degree with a lot of experience. So that's the first thing. The, theory. The second thing that I believe, um, a bit of advice that can help you, is the application, the ability to apply the information, which is so critical. Um, so coaching experience is critical. I never really understood coaching experience until I actually started coaching 
and understanding in the real world what's theoretical is always practical. I call it the 80 20 rule. You're in uni, you think 80, everything's 80% theoretical, 20% practical, and then you come out and you realise it's 80% practical, 20% percent theoretical. So exactly what I said in question one, what's theoretical is always practical, what's done in the lab isn't always transferable to the athletic environment. So I kind of felt the um, experience in coaching reps. So my best advice is intern somewhere, find a place you can intern. I was lucky enough to do a lot of places in Australia. Um, just get your hands to get get in the application, start actually doing it, start programming. Even program writing for, um, ex program, uh, exercise prescription, athletic-based programming is an art and a science. It's how you interpret the fundamental sports science principles and apply them into a practical sense for um, athletic development, injury prevention, uh, fat loss, muscle gain. That, that's that's an art in itself. And you, the only way you're gonna get better at it is by just doing it. So do it for your parents, do it for your brother, do it for your sister, but just go and do it. And don't be worried about what people think. Go and see if it works um, because there's many ways to skin a cat, or I'll keep using, I use a lot of um, quotes, don't I, Al? You know, like, don't throw the baby out the bathwater. You know, there's one, don't, there's many ways to skin a cat, and um, many roads lead to Rome. So there's many ways you can do things in this industry. You just need to find the best way for your athlete, your client, right? My way is just what works for me. I'm not saying that I have the only way of doing things. I'm not that arrogant to say so. Don't write anything over this when I write that, because I know you will, but I'm not that arrogant to say so. This is just what works for me. Find a way that works for you. So. I think practice application is critical. The biggest issue in Australia is there's not enough places where exercise science students, graduates, whatever the fuck it is, can get enough experience and apply that knowledge in a practice sense. Okay, or not enough, not enough kids want that want to do it. I mean, you've got all this knowledge. Fucking use your knowledge. Go out, fucking intern somewhere. Who gives a fuck if it's a local gym? Go to a go to a local trainer. Pay him 80, 90 bucks an hour. Invest in your fucking edu education. Invest in your knowledge and teach him. Say, teach me, coach me on the prong pattern, squatting, deadlifting, horizontal push, horizontal pull, my big six, squat, hinge, horizontal push, uh, bench press, push up, horizontal pull, row, overhead press and chin up, my big six movement. Become competently good yourself in those six movements. Become confident of that and then apply it. And then the last one would be networking. I think a big thing is a lot of students are scared of that word networking, it's a big thing, or networking and um, selling yourself. Don't be scared to sell yourself. Don't be scared to network. I think you're looking at a guy who can probably sell ice to Eskimos. And I, yeah, I, I didn't grow up, you know, I didn't, I didn't really believe in myself at the start. It took to go to America to one day to wake up and said, I would be the catalyst to change industry in Australia. And that's how I feel. I feel like I sell s in Australia in the private sector. I'm proud to say I'll do it. And I love what I do and I believe we can make a massive difference. This industry can grow. But we have to have more guys selling it. We have to have more guys with passion. We have to have more people who are willing to stand up and say, fuck, this is what we do, and this is what we're good at. We are good at rehab, mid to end stage rehab, return to perform, and athlete development, okay? And Australian athletes have to start looking at that and saying, athlete development is injury reduction. Injury reduction is athlete development. So if you're prepared properly, you're not gonna get injured, you're gonna perform your sport, and you're gonna get better. And we have to have more people selling, and I sell it, and I love what I do, and I'm passionate. So, what was her name? Sorry? Sarah. Sarah, from where? Queensland. Sarah from Queensland. Did that answer your question? Because I hope you did. I got a bit excited about that. And, there we go. and then every week, every week, we're doing a mystery question which Alex is going to ask and I'm not going to know about. Yep. Actually, I want to do that all. I want kind of. Oh, do you want that? Like all the questions being that you No, know I'd rather about? know the first one. Like I'd okay. like to know. So, okay. as I said, right in, so I know. And then the mystery question will be random. It could be from the haters. <laughs> any, ha like, any haters out there, anyone who hates me, like thinks I'm a douche, right in. And I'll answer, I will answer every question. I couldn't care less. Yeah. Yes. Because I probably am a douche, I'm a big douche. Third question. Uh, yes. Michael from Victoria. Michael, yes. How can I best improve my speed for football? Okay, that's a very good question, Michael. Very good question, I'm glad you asked that because many footballers just focus on the opposite side of the continuum. Look at anaerobic versus aerobic, they focus on the aerobic side because football, of course, is an endurance-based sport, which is heavily endurance, but it is high-intensity intermittent in nature. That means you need to develop power, speed, strength, agility, blah, 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 blah. Now, you asked a question about specifically about speed. Here's the most simple tip that I can give you to improve your speed off the bat. Get stronger. We know strength is highly correlated with acceleration and your ability to apply force in the ground. Now, a lot of guys aren't strong enough, i.e. meaning they cannot apply enough force in the ground, meaning they're not gonna run fast enough. Now, if we look at the two factors, two speed development, stride length is correlated with relative strength, i.e. your ability to apply force in the ground, and mobility. Stride frequency is correlated with mechanics. So technique is important. No doubt, but if you're a novice, Michael, I mean, you haven't given us, are you a novice, what's your training age? 
if you're a novice, your window of adaptation is quite large, so really any stimulus will yield really good results. So um, you literally can just develop your basic strength and you will develop your speed, your power, your agility, even your work capacity to a point. Um, so because strength is your foundation, is your foundation, your house is your foundation, your whole athletic career. So I think not enough athletes understand the value of strength. Okay, now I'm not talking, we get obsessive with, oh, fuck, if fucking strength was the best quality to improve your speed, powerless would be the best in the world, that would be the quickest in the world. Why does everyone look on the fucking right, like this end of the scale when they look at that? They always look at the worst end, oh, power lifters. You know, I'm not talking stupid strength like that, I'm just talking two times body weight, 1.5 times body weight. My guys, we have a rule, I want my guys to be at least 1.5 times body weight squat and deadlift, and they're gonna be confident, so we want them to be efficient as well. And that comes, you know, I talk about strength, everyone says, oh, efficiency is more important. No shit, when I'm talking about strength, I'm talking about efficiency as well. My background is motor control. I like my athletes to be efficient as well. When I say strength, I'm not just saying strength is they can chase numbers. That's not what we do for non-strength sport athletes. You know, I'm chasing strength, but I'm chasing efficiency as well. So I think that, that's a big one. Athletes don't understand the value of strength. Strength will uh, bulletproof your body as well, and I think it's critical. So for Michael in Victoria, that was correct, Michael Victoria, I think the first thing you can do is just look at your strength. I don't know train, so I'm not gonna get too technical with the questions. Strength, but also remember specificity. To run fast, to really run fast, you have to go out and run fast. Specificity would state that. So um, my suggestion would be doing maybe three 20 minute, uh, 20 meter runs and start training, working on a steep four lane, working on arm drive. If you want to know more information about how to coach speed, come to us, infowoodfordssc.com, comment or PM. You probably comment, can't comment or PM on this, can you? YouTube or no? You can comment, of course. Actually, you can if I put it up on Facebook. There we go. Yeah. Comment. So come down to us and we'll teach you it. That's what we are paying to do. That's what we're good at. Mystery question. Yeah. The one he doesn't know about. Oh, here we go. This is from email. This is an email from James Watson. He's a strength and performance coach at Pinnacle Performance Coaching. He said, hey, Christian, you talk a lot about your big six movements. Yeah. How do you assess athletes to make sure they are competent in those movements before programming? Very good question. Um, so I've got these big six, which um, I just said before, hinge, squat, horizontal push, horizontal pull, vertical push, vertical pull. Remember the body works as one unit, one synergistic unit, unit, so it's all about timing coordination of the nervous system. So I literally scream, their first session I scream, I don't believe in, by the way, I don't believe in FMS, FMA, uh, like FMA screening stuff, I don't believe in that screening. I do believe in a, a pathology musculoskeletal screening, just to give me any red flags. Um, I just kind of believe in that, I think if, um, someone with a pathology background, physio, osteocardia, whatever they, they do it, I've got no issue with that. Um, I'm really big on screening. I think the best way you can screen athletes is watch them move. And through my big six, the first session they do with me is I watch how they hinge, I watch how they squat, um, and then if I want to do some upper body, I watch how they push up and they do it wrong. They're, they're, the, they're the main movements I like to see. I want my athletes to be competent on. That's really going to develop a lot of body strength, a lot of body power. Um, so I have certain core competencies that I look for. Um, so example would be a hinge. Um, I have points that I look for. It might be, can the athlete push back at the hips? Can they engage their lats? Can they control the negative? Can they hold at the knee for a certain time? Can they keep their neck at neutral? Um, can they explode up through their feet, um, press through their heels? Can they um, use hip extension? Can they hip extend or back extend so they don't compensate for the erectors? Can they finish at neutral? Stuff like this. So that's my checklist I've used. Everyone's different, but this is what I use through my years of coaching, what has worked for us. Um, but I've kind of found that with my big six, once I get my guys really savagely competent at those big six movements, I've seen massive transfer to the athletic environment for athletic performance and injury reduction. So hopefully you come to one of my courses, one of our courses, and you see how we do things. Um, and our courses are always coming through. So where's he from? Probably, I don't know. Michael from don't know. Make sure you put where you're from and your full name. No, not Michael. It's uh, James. James, James Watson. James Watson from Pinnacle. From Pinnacle Performance Coaching. Pinnacle Performance Coaching. James Watson. Watson. I can say his name. Watson. Watson. So there we go, guys. There is episode one. All wrapped up. Ask Woodford. So next week, episode two. If you have a question, Calix, tell them how they can do it. Just comment below. Comment below. Um, you can even email. Christian. Email Christian at Woodford SSN. and I'll send them straight through to Alex. Um, what yeah. else? Comment on Facebook, Instagram. And please, YouTube. please, if you like this, subscribe to my channel. Yeah. Christian Woodford, subscribe. Share this page. I really appreciate it because I'll be dropping knowledge bombs weekly. And hopefully you enjoy it. And once again, you can give me any questions. I will answer it on business, on live. But I'm only going to answer three with one mystery question. So thanks, guys, for listening. 
Um, if you have any questions towards me, you want coaching for our guys, info at woodfordssc.com. For me personally, Christian at woodfordssc.com. I have a certain list that I have, like I've got a waiting list, so email me through anyway. I'd like to talk shop and um, see what, if you got injured or if you're up to performance. Um, remember our four, um, four centers, Moravin, Casey, West, and Ballarat. Other than that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the first show of Ask Woodford. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hopefully I'll see you down at Centre Soon.